Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing. Pom -pom. <laughs> Not that we picked it, but it was on the list um, that I found. Uh, but what is one of those things? But uh, a lot of it, yeah, it always reminds me you got 10 foot, uh, you know, Cyclops robots, which I'm very much like, or stood still kind of stuff. <laughs> like, right. Tattoo Barada Nikto. Um, uh, and and so yeah, and the and the gonk droid. I just I I like this fact for just like there's this little droid walking around on two feet. Like it doesn't roll around on wheels like you think. It doesn't hover. It doesn't hover like you think. Like uh, you know, uh, aliens that would have control of of gravity and time and space to travel the vast distances between solar systems. But it's got little legs that it walks on. It's great. I love it. Love it. love fucking gonk droids. Gonk, gonk, gonk. Gonk, gonk. <laughs> um, so to, to temper the whole thing, uh, you kind of have to also go into the background of what was going on, maybe like the, the cultural and, and social climate of the time. <clears throat> so like we like we mentioned before at the beginning of the podcast, or this, this case file specifically, um, this is very much uh, at the time, uh, the Soviet Union is in shambles. It is falling apart. It is, um, it is changing uh, at the time. Uh, and even before this time, there, there was a concept which had been kind of, uh, I guess you could say it had been, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, <laughs> I can't remember the word, I, whatever. Um, so there, there's a concept. Whatever, called, it doesn't fucking matter, all right? I can't, yeah, I can't remember, yeah. I'm not saying. It's, they were poor and starving, word. basically. <laughs> no, no, it's a, there was a concept that had been, uh, brought forth ushered in yeah ushered in with the with the um uh with, with the changing times especially in in the media so in the media of the soviet union so a lot of the soviet union you know under stalin uh had been like a real clamp down on what you could print at the time like there's very there were things that you could print and things you cannot print it was super heavily state run Right. Everything yeah. was super censored. Like there were there were things that you could put in there and there were definitely things that you were going to get yeah. in there or you're going to go to the gulag. Like that's where yeah. you're going to end up. If, if you think we're experiencing a, a little bit of oppression and free speech in North America at the moment, you got <laughs> not anymore. You got to must saved us. Must okay. save us. But you got to you got to go back to the USSR. Words you want on Twitter now. Hmm. And so towards the end of the USSR's existence, um, you there was a. There was a decreasing pre-publication and pre-broadcast censorship. So there was they were not getting the, the media companies, the news newspapers, um, uh, news programs were not getting a lot of interference on what they could run and what they could not run uh, with. So this is just about the time. Um, it, you know, it was kind of a it, usually it's cited as being like a little. Uh, like a just like a five year period between 1986 and 1991 is where it really started to kind of ramp up, and so a lot of the uh, news agencies were just kind of printing stuff and being like, seeing kind of is how this far illegal? we can go, like how no. far can we push this along? No, I, to I got a great <laughs> metaphor for this this time in uh, the USSR. At the end of it, here it's like uh, the five years pre weed legalization in Canada, where there's this weed stores that would pop up. And they would keep selling more and more and stronger edibles. Oh. And then eventually they're like, okay, we get away with this. This is all good. And then there was a hundred weed shops. Then there was a thousand. Then they're like, I guess this is legal now. And then we legal us. That's pretty <laughs> much what happened here. Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty apt uh, metaphor. So um, not only were you having a lot of information like within the country itself coming out, you had a lot more information about the quality of life and the quality of consumer goods that were uh, in the United States and Western Europe. And all of that became started to filter on into the Soviet population who had been, you know, at this time, like we said, they were waiting in bread lines. Like there were bread lines in the Soviet union. Like there was widespread, widespread wow. hunger. Mi uh, like didn't actually like millions of people starve to death over the, the last, like a couple, there were a couple of places like that happened. There was, yeah. there was some mass um, starvation. Horrifying. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you had this entire kind of all of this stuff kind of from the from the West was kind of filtering in because it, it, all of it wasn't being heavily censored as it was before. So this also included the things like the entire stuff that was going 
on in the U.S., like it, the kind of whole Western UFO neo-spiritualism stuff that was, was going on, that was forming in the United States and Western Europe. So you're getting all of those ideas big coming out of UFOs, right? UFOs, Roswell, and all of those things, those ideas about UFOs were coming into Russia as well. Mm. So... <laughs> So you have these you ha you have a lot of newspapers just kind of printing stuff saying like, oh, somebody saw something strange. We could print a story about it. Not necessarily being like, you know, people will read it. That's cool, right? And like and, and it's also it's gonna get people's mind off of the idea that we're all our entire society is falling apart at the seams. <laughs> Uh, you that's know, a good, you, that's an escape, right? Right. Something to take your mind off of fucking what's going on. Well, and you're all so, starving. Who's not to say that you're hallucinating? You just haven't eaten. I'll be eating bread. <laughs> uh, so, so, but the also the interesting thing is that not only was this this event like drew the attention of local newspapers, but even like international newspapers. Like you had the New York Times uh, actually contacted uh, Moiseev, who was the director, uh, or Vladimir. Uh, Moiseev, which was the director of the regional health department in for that area. And they asked him about this. Like they asked him about this specific event. Like, Hey, we heard, we heard about this. Like, do you have any comment to like, did any of a, uh, you know, for example, did that kid who disappeared and came back, did, did anybody did at the, at the site? Yeah. yeah. Has Is anybody talked okay? to him? <laughs> has yeah. anybody, Duh, we gave him some bread and sent him on his way. Yeah. <laughs> we put him to the front of the line. He's okay. Uh, but apparently, ac according to Moiseev, like, none, none of the witnesses who had been there uh, asked for medical help or reported to any uh, medical facility to, to get checked out. Even the boys who had the, the other two boys who were identified by name uh, did not get uh, receive any medical attention or anything like weeks after the encounter. I don't think they were getting a lot of medical attention for much, though, at this time to be in their defense. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so it's, you know, that that doesn't really weigh too much for me that they didn't go get medical help because I'm like, well, they were also starving and bread lines. Like, things weren't good. So it's like, would you have gone to seek medical help? I don't think would so. Would there be help for them? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, would, would there, there even resources be resources at that time? Send them to the fucking barber. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you need a haircut. Uh, and there were a couple groups that that uh, took this. Not only did you have you know scientists out there looking for the you had you had Jacques Vallée out there uh, you know talking to scientists and things, but you had other uh, organizations that were kind of uh, perhaps trying to capitalize on the idea that this was a Russia's Waswell because you had a there was a private company Waswell? that was Waswell. Waswell. Was it Waswell? Waswell. 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 Um, you had a co a private company called stalker stalker yeah, yeah it, it, it was a business apparently that opened up and offered tours of the voronezh uh tours UFO of your girlfriend's sites. apartment <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and so you could you could take a tour i guess they would pack you into a van and for 95 dollars you could drive out to some of these landing sites and for an extra three dollars this is american dollars not rubles but like an extra three dollars you could talk to specialists and witnesses firsthand yeah, I'm it, pretty sure they gave you. They included accommodations too, which is probably <laughs> just a bunk bed in the trailer. Yeah, the they probably also get probably give you a rank in the fucking Soviet military. <laughs> I feel like sign like here. $3, like, you want commission? You want to sign here? To be a Russian lieutenant? <laughs> yeah, off uh, to Gulag you go. Um, what's interesting when I was thinking about this this uh, encounter. Um, two two things kind of ideas popped in my head when I was looking at it is one of the things is that these you know beings you know, described nine ten feet tall whether that's exaggerated or not a lot of the descriptions of them kind of have them as lumbering like you know kind of like with their little mechanical not such smooth movements that we would be making they described it as like an awkward gait like how they yeah, walk yeah like so it's part of me like that kind of got me thinking i was like well maybe if they're from another planet that had a higher gravity than ours or lower gravity sorry lower gravity than ours and they're coming here and it's like this is like they're like this is like they're it's like We're walking struggling. mud for them right like even though they're bigger uh maybe their muscle tone and stuff and in these suits are it's very cumbersome right so it's it's actually tougher yeah, by than, the time they leave their power levels are gonna be way up. yeah oh, yeah always exactly. train in higher gravity 
So I was kind of thinking that maybe that could account for some of that like awkward gait and stuff. Um, but it wouldn't account for like them just have like disappearing. Cause I'm like, why would you ever walk around if you had the, uh, ability to just like disappear to wherever you're from. Um, but that kind of got me thinking on the, when I was trying to figure out that aspect of it, I was kind of thinking that like, if we were like as three dimensional beings, like if we wanted to interact, Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but Here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.